YouTube. In this video, I'll show you how to build a device that measures the speed of a projectile using an Arduino. And specifically, I'm going to be testing how fast my paintball gun can shoot. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, here's a quick overview of the device before I build it. Um, pretty much what the theory behind this is that we have two beams of in infrared light that the, is hooked up to the Arduino and when I shoot a paintball through them there's a time delay between when this one's tripped and when this one's tripped. Um, so the Arduino will be able to keep track of that and with the time and the distance we can find the velocity. So that's the theory. Um, so what I've done here is just I have a base that's laid out this whole thing. It's about eight inches by three and a half inches and we have two rails on either side that are each f five inches long. These are going to hold our sensors that we're using with Arduino and what we're using is these infrared sensors from Radio Shack that I um, got today and uh, with those we drill a quarter inch holes through the rails and quarter inch holes through the whole base and the rails and that's those, those holes that are drilled vertically um, through the base are for the wires to go down to the bottom. The Arduino is going to be located on the bottom and there's going to be little uh, feet on the bottom so um, there's no like the Arduino won't be touching the ground. And that's the main part behind that. The sensors are going to be four inches apart and we'll, that's an important measurement later on when we're doing coding. So here's my paintball barrel and I wanted to have a little spot to rest this. So I'm going to be, just build two little um, kind of triangle uh, gaps so I, my, my paintball barrel will rest firmly in here um, just when I'm shooting. So that's a basic overview. I'm going to go down to my garage now and we'll start building. Alright guys, just got back from the garage and I got this built. It is a little bit different than what I said I was going to build in the little draft, but um, I decided to change it. I just added one of these little um, barrel um, supports and uh, I didn't drill holes that are, went straight down into the device here. Um, I just didn't think it was really worth it. I could just put the wires off the side. But yeah, it turned out pretty good. I might give it a paint job um, in a while. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the code and the circuit. Okay guys, this is the schematic. You can pause it if you need to see it for a long period of time. Um, we're, only, we're only using four pins on the Arduino. Positive five volts, ground, analog end pin four, and analog end pin five. Here you can see the infrared um, emitters, and here are the infrared receivers. These are the dark LEDs, and then these are the clear LEDs. Or just, they're re really just diodes. So um, you need to pay attention also to the polarity that um, you're putting these in. You can see from the emitters to the receivers they're actually they're swapped and uh, right here I have this is the short pin wh where the schematic is and then this is the long pin on your on your diode when you when you're putting them in and yeah that's pretty much it you can see I I have 100, 100 ohm resistors in line with those and then this is acting act actually as a voltage divider and then our Arduino is reading the voltage that we're getting from it so you need a resistor down here. It doesn't really matter what um, value, but I'm just using 100 ohms. So that might be what you want to use too. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. Okay guys, here we are on my computer. I have two Arduino sketches open. Um, this one is the calibrator program. And uh, you're gonna wanna run this after you, devil after you build your chrono or if you change uh, your environment. Say like you go from like in shooting, trying to measure feet per second indoors and measuring outdoors where there's changes in the ambient IR light. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open the serial monitor over here and we get this uh, little display and it's posting our first sensor value and our second sensor value here. And uh, so you, the, for the more IR light that the sensor receives, it's gonna have a higher value. And uh, so when an object's in between the emitter and the sensor, then it's gonna drop dramatically. So if I move it, if I move like a pencil or something in front of the first sensor, you can see it drops to zero. And the same thing for the second sensor. 
So um, what the, what we need is a threshold a threshold number, and that's what the other program is going to use to know that there's an object there. And um, in my case, since I have 35 and 39, um, any number really between like 10 and 30 is going to work pretty well, um, since there's not really any ambient IR light in between where I am. So it, the number drops all the way down to zero when there's an object there. Um, so I'm in this program, I just use 30. Um, so you can see over here, I I plugged in 30 for right here, right here, right here, and right here. So that's all for the calibrator program. And over here, I'm I'm gonna hit go ahead and upload this to my board and just explain the program a little bit. Um, so up here we just create some numbers or s yeah, some values and uh, right we kind of set up our two pin our input pins here four and five and then right here we have an unsigned long these store our two time values that we get for each sensor and right here is a float value um, and this is two float values and these are used in cal some calculations later on and then these two ints store the value from our sensor so in our setup we begin our serial communication with the computer we set our two pins as inputs and that's it and for the loop we print the line waiting for a projectile and then we're reading our two sensors really it just needs to read one sensor but I included that for some reason, I don't know why. But uh, so while the value is greater than 30, we're not doing anything except for reading the sensor. And while the value, when the value drops below or equal to 30, uh, we're going to record the time in microseconds from the time the program began, and again, again, just check the sensor. So that we do the same exact thing for the second sensor and record a second time and everything. And after that's done, we can do our calculations. So we have el elapsed time is simply. Um, the second time minus the first time and then we can go calculate feet per second and we get a constant over our elapsed time and this this constant comes from the distance between the two sensors in our chrono and in my case I made it four inches so four inches is one third of a foot which is point three 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 so on and so forth feet and um, that that feet the amount of feet that we get needs to be changed a little bit since we're recording in microseconds a microsecond is 10 to the negative six seconds so we got to move the decimal over six places to the right and that gives me 333,333 and that gives us our FPS so if I go ahead and run my serial monitor now we'll just check and make sure everything's working right it now it says waiting for projectile so that's a good sign and um, when I slide a pin through my two sensors on my breadboard I should get a reading um, that was a pretty low reading and um yeah I can it's it's working so that's all I need to know right now so I will see you guys back at my bench hey guys uh, we're back on the bench and I would really recommend that before you put everything into like a final product like this and uh, just get everything ready I'd really recommend that you uh, prototype it like on a breadboard first, just to make sure you can get everything working before you go through all the trouble to get this um, built. It'll save probably some frustration in the long run. But um, I just did that. I I made that video and I was I made sure everything's working. So now I'm I'm good to put everything in this. I'm probably gonna give this a paint job, and I'll be back once everything is done. Hey guys, um, I'm outside now, and as you can see over here, I've got everything pretty much done on my little chrono. I got the Arduino on the bottom and everything is wired up. So, and I gave it kind of a bad paint job, but you know, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I have my uh, little serial monitor, monitor open and everything's plugged up to my laptop here. And I'm gonna test it with my paintball gun some. We'll see what it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a couple of shots. Let's see. All right. Uh, our first shot was 248.02, and I'll probably show this uh, serial port later on, and I'll, I'll give you guys a close-up on when I get. Alright, ne next one was 270.56. Uh, that was a false reading, it gave me .05 for some reason. Sometimes it does that, I think it's because, uh, like, the CO2 causes some um, water to... to uh, 
condense and it makes some like water vapor come out the muzzle and I think that might be something part of what's wrong but uh, let's try it one more time that time it didn't even read there we go there's another so I got I got three uh, three fairly good uh, readings there and I got a couple of false ones like I got about two false ones let me take you a uh, close up to my screen and show you what I just did so I got up here 248.02, 270.56, 0.05, and 248.02. So uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. If I was to change something at this point, I would have made uh, the distance that I shoot a little bit longer from my sensors because I think that water vapor is interfering a little bit. But uh, it definitely can read it. Uh, that's what I expect to be shooting somewhere in that range, and it is a little bit. It varies a little bit. Sorry. It varies a little bit, so um, but that two two forty eight and two seventy that's something that you really um, expect to shoot with a paintball gun. And last time I played, uh, they, I think they chronoed my gun around uh, two two fifty or two sixty. So and it, again, it, it does vary some, but yeah, that's um, everything on how to build a chronograph for with Arduino, and it seems to work pretty well. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped if you're trying to build something like this. And uh, don't forget to su subscribe. <laughs>